Welcome to the Lean Out Your Business podcast, a show dedicated to helping entrepreneurs accelerate business growth and simplify success. I'm your host, Krista Grasso, and I've been working with businesses for more than two decades to help them lean out and optimize what's working while eliminating anything that's not adding value. So if you are ready to get more time back in your day, more profit in your business, and to do business differently, growing and scaling on your terms, let's dive into today's episode. Hello, hello, and welcome to another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I am so excited to introduce you to today's guest, Miss Sacred Walker, who is joining us today. And we're going to be diving into peak performance, but we're going to be looking at that through what I think is just such an important lens, which is that lens of mental health and well being and the things that we really should be thinking of as the visionaries and leaders of. Of our business. So Sacred, I'm so excited that you're here. Thank you so much for joining me on the show today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I have such deep respect for you and all you do and for everyone joining and tuning in. So lovely to meet you today. Great. Let me tell you a little bit about Sacred, and then we're going to get to all the good stuff. So Sacred Walker is the founder of Self Love for Superheroes, which is a mental health and peak performance practice. She transforms lives as a mental health therapist, interfaith minister, and an Ivy League master speaker. She is the host of a talk show called Self Love Letters for Everyday Superheroes, and she specializes in what she calls love medicine coaching, which is a proprietary method of holistic coaching that supports visionaries and executives in high stress work environments. And we're going to dive in and talk a little bit about that today. Um, <laughs> but with that secret, here's where I'd love to start today. And that is with the concept of peak performance. I think we hear that term a lot. And I'd love to hear how do you define it? And why do you think that's something that's so important for those of us who are leading our businesses. Absolutely. So what I have found in the last decade in doing this work is that we oftentimes think of peak performance as how are we strong, motivated, pushing forward, right? Like that resiliency, which I think is really powerful. But we don't often look at what's behind the shadows in addition to in the light because the shadows are called shadows for a reason. So I define peak performance from a health perspective. At Love Medicine Coaching, the V stands for vice to victory. We look at what are some of the vices that actually might be stumbling you or causing sabotage or might be actually red flags that might get in the way of you being victorious. So let's have peak performance, but let's make sure that our bodies, our mind, body, spirit are sustained so that our true peak performance can support our vision for the long haul, right? Because we're here to build a legacy, not burn out in the process. See, and this is why I love your work so much. And I love <laughs> what you do. Because it just makes so much sense, right? I think we can so easily get caught up in more of that hustle, achieve it all cost kind of culture. And we end up missing out on us being happy, us being fulfilled, us operating at our best, and us doing this for the reason we got into business in the first place, which is, as you said, typically this brilliant vision and some kind of legacy that we feel called to leave. And it's not just to achieve the next milestone, but I think that we hear that so often that it can be easy to get caught up in that. And so what do you see really keeps people from being at their peak performance? And what are some of those vices and things that that you experience? Absolutely. And this is from personal experience. I have a therapist whom I love, who's one of my amazing mentors, who recently said to me, she was like, you know, I was really wrestling with, oh my goodness, I want to make sure that I've mastered these things, right? And she said, you know, because of the fact that you have gone through many of the things that you also are able to embody and teach, that makes you an even more powerful healer and leader. So when I speak about some of these things, it's not to judge or to say that it doesn't make you any more badass, brilliant, bold, and bodacious. 
we're just looking at what are some of the things that are happening in the shadows that might stop you from getting to your goals, right? And I'm speaking from personal experience, but everything I'm mentioning now are things that I've not only seen within myself, but the thousands of people that I've served. So I would say one of the things are health breakdowns. We have to pay attention to our heart, right? And now this is the tricky part, right? Of course, we want to look at the bottom line. We want to look at the bottom line and we want to look at how are we looking at our costs and our profit, right? How are we looking at how we're breaking even? But I begin to shift the language. How are we breaking down if we don't really understand what the cost of not taking care of our health is, right? What are the, what are the ways that maybe our body is trying to tell us something when we look at our heart, when we look at our gut, when we really look at our impulses? So I want to give an example, right? For the longest time, I was noticing that there was this ache around my chest area, this strong ache, and I would go to the hospital for it. They didn't know what to do. They would send me home. I would go in again, right? They would send me home. I would go in multiple times. And then a lot of the clients that I was serving who were coming to me, executives, health and human service leaders, entrepreneurs, were noticing that they were having aches in their heart and aches in their stomach. They were not eating well. They were skipping lunch, for example, or they were really noticing they would go to bed with this heaviness. And eventually I started doing this work where I started focusing on an integrative health. And I saw an integrative health specialist myself before I became trained in mind-body health. And you know what he told me was happening after years of going to the ER, right? Missing work on my way to making my vision happen as a manifester. He said, you've been holding emotions that are affecting your heart. And what you think, or the doctor at some times thought were warnings of a heart attack, were actually anxiety, right? So one of the things I began to look at are what are the ways that when we are stressed, right, or maybe our relationships are breaking down because we're pouring ourselves into our work and maybe neglecting our love life, or pouring ourselves into jumping right into work in the morning and skipping breakfast, that our heart and our stomach are tightening out of stress. I began to have womb issues, right? All clenching out of stress because the body does what it does. It says, I'm going into survival mode. I'm going to get really tense. I'm going to pull back. I'm going to conserve all of my energy. I'm not going to let any food in right now. I'm not going to let any love in right now. I'm not going to move until you tell me you're not in survival mode anymore. And when I began to create tools focused in on vice to victory, I was able to help people to shift those things. So they noticed that their health was returning, right? My digestive tract began to shift. I began to call it my anxiety spot. I paid attention. Okay, wait a minute. I'm about to say yes to this deal. My anxiety spot is burning. Let me take a pause before saying yes. I began to ask for my worth in a different way. I began to call in higher numbers. Things began to shift because I was paying attention to those body signals. And I noticed that that's when things began to change. And people started coming to me and saying, oh my gosh, I'm communicating more clearly with my partner. You know, I actually was overworking because I was avoiding the fact that I was pissed at them. And not only was their work benefiting, but when they came home, they were happy too. So I began to really look at how we can shift and have happy heart, happy life. I resonate with so much of what you just said. I was like, wait a minute, is she talking about me? Right now? <laughs> I was, I was <laughs> talking about myself. That's why I said it up front. <laughs> but I think the, I mean, the sad thing is, honestly, so many of you listening probably were saying, wait a minute, oh. how did she know that about me? Because <laughs> I do think it is so common. And you described it so well because I feel stress completely in my chest. Mm -hmm. I feel it in my stomach. Mm -hmm. I've had ulcers in the past. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of health issues and it tends to always be in those areas. Mm -hmm. And I know it's my body's reaction to stress that sometimes I don't even realize that I'm feeling until I pay attention to my body. Mm -hmm. So I do think that that's just so valuable that you share that. And for those of you listening, I hope that you do not have that as well. But I have a sneaky suspicion that you probably do. <laughs> Absolutely. And you know what? You're not alone. I want to name that 80%, 80% of the reasons why we go to the doctor are often stress related. And the Surgeon General recently said that the biggest thing that's affecting us, even higher than some of the numbers that we're seeing in physical, are emotional based, right? So the key mm -hmm. is we see those things 
and we spot check them. I myself have had ulcer issues, right? I've had endometriosis, right? Which is a form of the womb being really stressed and it feels like so much more than it is, right? When we can address those things and we can take a pause, we can nourish our body and nourish our heart and ask ourselves that really key question, what is getting in the way right now, right? How is that spot in my body? It might be a sign of a sabotage spot, right? And when I became so much clearer, I found that if I do not unplug one day a week on a Friday and really tune in and pay attention and ask myself the question, what is my body telling me? I will go straight into autopilot. Autopilot and anxiety would, would be my first steps versus intentional actions. And we're just calling our body to pay attention. If I know feast or famine is real, y'all. So I'm not saying that if you have an aching tummy, but you got to show up powerfully for that presentation, that meaning, that training, that teaching, right? That sometimes life calls us to show up even when things are uncomfortable. What I'm saying is on the other side of showing up powerfully before you jump into the next thing, right? Pull a, you know, pull a Krista and, and pull back and go, let's pause for a moment before you jump in so that you can listen to your sabotage spots. So it's interesting. I'd love to hear one of the things that's worked for me that I do every morning is I journal. And I used to avoid journaling so much, but I find if I can take the time to start writing, and sometimes I literally stare at a blank page and I have no idea what to say, but I force myself to just start. And once I start, <laughs> it keeps going. And so I find that that works really well for me. But what do you recommend? So if somebody listening is saying, all right, I get the symptoms. I'm not sure what to do about it. What do you, what are some of those things that you've seen work really well or that you guide people through? Absolutely. And you know, within our Limitless Leaders Club, we go more into some of the ways that there are physical things that are happening and how you can create focused intention and really look at shifting what's challenging you and create some changes because everyone is so unique, right? But we really personalize it based on kind of years of experience. You'll find that kind of is guided through. One of the things you talked about was journaling, right? Many of us can be able to create space to either write or journal or you know even color, right? Some people do speak into that. One of the ways that I have found is the thought first that happens, right? If you can think of them as good and bad, right? And not the good girl, the part of us that's like has to conform and has to do what, you know, an authority figure outside of ourselves tells us. Because one of the biggest things I find about entrepreneurs, many of us don't like being told what to do, right? <laughs> so we're not talking about that kind of good and bad. I'm talking about when you catch yourself taking a, what I call, Bad stands for a broken-hearted, anxiety-driven decision versus a goal-oriented, open-hearted, optimal decision, right? If I'm looking at, is this an anxiety-driven decision? Am I going to feel really guilty about this afterwards, right? So think of the cost, right? I'm going to spend a dollar here, and I'm going to be able to get this much. But if maybe if I invested $30 in the th same thing, maybe in an HR person, for example, right? I'm going to get someone who has this much experience versus they come into the door with that much experience, right? Think of it that way. Is the cost right now in the feel good moment going to be worth the guilt and the impact in the long run? Are, that's when we begin to create a shift, right? Is this choice I'm making an investment in my future self? And I know that can be a rewiring of our neural pathways, which is why we created a whole program around embodied leadership. But I wanna first ask you to take a moment right now and do an inventory, write down three things that you have done that you just wanna to admit to yourself. The, the first person you should admit to because you're about becoming your own best friend, right? And embodying confident leadership is to admit it to yourself. It doesn't mean you have to be perfect. You okay, be imperfectly fabulous. Three things that might have been bad decisions. Not bad because you're bad, bad because they were brokenhearted, anxiety-driven, right? I know for me, when I'm having a brokenhearted, anxiety-driven moment, the first thing I'm going to reach for is rum and raisin. Is rum and raisin bad? Absolutely not. If I sit there and I do a whole rum and raisin, it's because I might have had a moment where I really needed to connect that day. I might have really needed to connect in with my inner circle. I might have really needed to reach out and make a powerful choice, but I paused and I was worried about how it was going to be perceived and I didn't take that action, right? So I'm reaching for that $1 thing 
versus that $30 thing, which is why it's a vice to victory. So just take a moment in your writing and just admit to yourself, you know what? I made these three choices. And then from there, and this is why we created a whole program around it, then you can really look at how do we want to shift things differently? So maybe if I'm writing, I'm choosing to write versus scroll on my phone. I know scrolling on my phone first thing in the morning is the worst thing I can do. All of a sudden, my mind is tinkering. I'm responding to emails impulsively. I don't even know what I said at 6 a.m. I'm like, oh, my gosh, what did my team leader say to me? Okay, did I get it right? Right. I'm moving from an anxiety driven place because my mind is trying to understand, are you operating in survival mode or are you operating from an embodied centered place? Right. And so I'm first acknowledging, hey, I made a choice. I, I started the day with winning. I chose to write and journal versus choosing to scroll on the phone. Right. I'm choosing my vice to victory. And if there are some histories behind that, some inner critic, inner child stuff, we can work through that through the program because we've been programmed and we're just deprogramming ourselves. So I definitely think first acknowledging that would be a first step. I would be say a second step would be to be honest, begin to look at your community. Take a moment and write down what I do every day is I write down one question. What is the question that I want to answer for the day, right? Because we all have our checklists and, and, and you are amazing at, for those who don't know the lean out method, you are amazing at looking at time blocking and focus time and being intentional. But one of the things that I have found, if I'm not careful as a business owner, and the Surgeon General recently said, isolation is one of the biggest things that are harder on us today on the other side of COVID, sometimes even bigger in numbers than some of the highest health issues out there, isolation. So what I found was I'm really good at sending referrals to other people, right? Taking care of others as a superhero. To get unstuck, write a question and then write down three people who can help you get that question answered. I really wanted to secure a social seller so that we can really meet our goal of one million visionary leaders. I had to say to myself, who do I know that might be a trusted referral partner? Who do I know that's dreaming even bigger than me that I can reach out to, to ask so that I don't go into the day in funnel vision because that is not something that is going to feed me today, right? So first step, write down those three things that are vices and take one victorious action and add self-love for superheroes will guide you to embodying that. And number two, write down one question that'll be your if I answer this today, I'll feel successful and reach out to three people that will support that vision so that you don't ever feel like you're holding your vision alone. There is so much I love about what you just shared. But the thing that I love so much is I do think, and I know this is true for me as well, I love to help others. I struggle to ask for help and support. And I think that if you make that a daily practice and you ask yourself that question and you challenge yourself to actually reach out to three people, how powerful that must be to shift and get more comfortable actually asking for and receiving and accepting help from others. So I love that so much. Yeah, thank you so much. And I had a client of mine, amazing leading nurse practitioner who was in one role, was constantly feeling underestimated as a leader, felt like she constantly had to prove that she was a position of, you know, of expertise, felt like she wasn't quite worthy or doing enough and ended up getting laid off and could have stayed stuck there could have stayed stuck in this place of, you know, what's going to happen and also had a side hustle of like, I really want to launch this vision that I have, but I'm not sure how to move forward. And in supporting her to embody her confident voice, to tune in, to write her question and her three point people to reach out to and literally take time to look at how she can really shift some of those vices to victories. How am I telling myself that I'm not worthy of the love and the life that I'm ready for? She was able to not only step into a position where that new position doubled her income. The minute that she asked, people were like, finally, you've done so much for me. I would love to immediately refer you to your ideal position, right? Not only that, but she was able to step into a position where she embodied her confident voice when she got there. So she was not in a place anymore of, am I, am I ready for this? She was like, I'm the team leader. Here I am. This is the agenda for the day. 
right? Because she did that work in the shadows behind the scenes, she stood up confidently when she stepped into that new role. So I've seen it happen again and again in real time when we do what we need to do to do the work behind the scenes to really show up and shine. Now, one of the things I want to talk a little bit and dive into, because this is such an area of expertise for you, but mental health and well-being and some of the challenges and some of what we're currently seeing today in our post-COVID world and, or I don't even know, is it post-COVID? Is it still a COVID world? I have no idea, but after all, (laughs) whatever happened. (laughs) So what are some of the things that you're seeing and what are some of the things that we really want to be paying attention to or watching for as the leaders of our business? Absolutely. Absolutely. So I pride myself on taking information that feels very clinical and feels very guru and feels very hokey pokey complex DEI and making it feel really streamlined and simple. And one of the ways that I have found is that sometimes we may not always have a language for what's happening inside of our bodies or inside of our minds or in our spirits, but we can kind of have a language for what's happening in our home. And we can kind of have a language for what's happening in our business. And one of the things that I found is that If you left your full-time job, for example, if you were someone who was working in corporate or who was a leader in health and human service or what have you, sometimes the very boss that you are running from is actually not quite as loud as the inner critic boss that you become for yourself when you step into your business full time. Ask me how I know. And so sometimes you can be even harder on yourself when you leave. You're like, when I work for myself, I'm going to be the best boss babe or the best boss brother ever, right? And so if we're not careful, that inner critic can actually tell us we're constantly never not doing enough and we actually become a harder boss than the one we left. So one of the things that people don't often connect is what is your home speaking about about that, especially if you're a home-based business. If you begin to notice that you're accumulating a lot in your home or you notice that you're a little shorter than usual in your home environment or you notice that your home environment that once became this like den of, yes, I get to work from home, this is the life, feels like Mm, this is not quite the cage I signed up for. Get me out. Get me a vacation. Those are all red flags that are speaking to something, right? Maybe I'm either feeling short or maybe I'm actually feeling rather controlled, but something's bothering me on the inside, right? Maybe I'm accumulating. It might be speaking into, uh, do I feel enough because I have enough, right? There's more there that we can dig into. Or do I notice that there's something about my home that doesn't quite feel right? And why I speak about this, because in the Limitless Leaders Club, towards around lesson five, we talk about creating a sacred space for your home and carving out space so that you can have not only space in your home for your very sacred space to be that miracle manifesting millionaire business environment that you want, but that your home environment on the outside and how you lead can reflect what's happening on the inside. So think about this. If I'm being the super critical boss of myself, and now I'm bringing on team members, if I'm not careful, I will become the expectation that they're gonna operate at 175% because I operate at 175%. And so sometimes if we're not careful, We don't want to be drivers that drive people out. And ask me how I know. I spent years having expectations of folks who, to be honest, weren't going to be able to fulfill those expectations, partially because they weren't skilled enough and I need to find the best person, best fit, partially because I had such hard expectations on myself that I was being hard on everyone else. And so we're just calling in some grace. Go after your millionaire ideas. Focus in but carve out sacred space in your home. And we walk you through how to create a sacred altar space, how to carve out time so that you can actually feel comfortable when you're doing your journaling, you're looking around at peace and joy versus clutter and chaos, right? How you can feel like the very place you live in is a place that is welcoming, warm and joyful for that happy heart, right? So that when you lead, you're not letting yourself lead from that inner critic place, you're leading from your infinite potential. But we walk you through that in the Limitless Leaders Club as well. 
Yeah, leading from your infinite potential. I love that. Um, so tell us more about Love Medicine Coaching. Tell us more about your work. How do you work with people? And what is the incredible transformation that people receive when they actually invest in themselves and work with you? Yeah, absolutely. And I want to name that I feel humbled to be here. And there might be many people that you might feel, you know, seeking out and you might be like, oh my gosh, who is the best fit, right? There's so many folks in the market today. What makes us unique is that first and foremost, we believe in people and we believe in creating culturally affirming spaces, right? That you can be authentic you in the fullness of who you are. So for me as a founder, as a Black, LGBT, Caribbean, spiritually grounded woman, there is a way that I found that a lot of spaces really had some missing pieces that I really found I needed to pour into this work. So that's something that is a really a part of the foundation is making sure that you feel cared for. And the minute that you say yes to yourself, you are matched with either me or someone who's a part of my team who really help create this luxury experience that I was able to really fine tune in working with you you know? And so then that's a gift. But what I would say is of what makes us unique and about this program is if you hop over to Self Love for Superheroes, you'll get a chance to actually sample it. We have something coming up called Unleashing Your Inner Superstar. We're really looking at within a 60 minute time, building your confident presence and becoming your own best friend again. Sometimes, you know, I'm in my forties now, you know, many tuning in might be in those sandwich years where maybe you're taking care of elder parents, you're taking care of children, or maybe you're taking care of team members who sometimes are amazing and sometimes act like children. You know, we're working through things. We're all navigating life together, right? But we're in these sandwich years. And what I have found to be so important is sometimes we ask ourselves in the morning, who exactly am I? Or how did I get here? Or do I feel most aligned with my vision? And does how I'm taking care of my body really resemble how I would want easily to take care of my best friend, right? Right? Would I wake up in the morning and take care of my best friend in that way if they came to me saying their stomach was hurting, their heart was heavy, or they felt like they were struggle, you know, struggling to sleep? right? We might love upon them. We might immediately take them away to a spa. We might immediately say, how do we focus your time and energy on your vision so that it can things can be delegated so you can feel joyful on the inside, right? So we began to really look at and harnessing that through a challenge we put together, which is our 21-day challenge to build in your confident presence and really becoming your own best friend again. So we have this one-day intro where you'll be able to come in, we're going to tune into touching into your authentic self, helping to see where some of those spots that you're missing are, and also just have fun so you can become your own best friend again. And some of the results that we've seen through doing this journey in the past is people have said that they felt like there were parts of themselves that they didn't even realize had grown because their business, just like a baby, changed them. And they hadn't even integrated the sweet part of themselves. That was actually a gift that was a huge idea that they ended up pivoting their business in, right? Because they were paying attention. Or we noticed that people were saying that they were struggling with insomnia and heart issues. Those are the biggest things. And especially a lot of stomach issues. Those three areas they noticed are the highest. That they began to see shifts in those things. That They were saying, oh my goodness gracious, I noticed that over the last couple of months, oh my gosh, I actually don't have as much vertigo, right? Not because I was taking a plane or traveling, because I feel more balanced on the inside. Or I noticed that the stomach issues that I was having, because I've shifted my diet and I've had a community that held me accountable to the goals, I didn't start it and sign up and fall away. I actually followed through. And now I feel like when I eat things that are acidic, my stomach doesn't hurt anymore and I can nourish my family right? And have energy for the day. So some of the results that I've seen have been really inspiring. And so we started with a beta group and now we're taking it to the public. And so I'm so excited. You'll be able to come experience day one, jump right in, connect with one another. And here you won't start something and not finish it. No more health goals that fall away, right? We're going to really support you to keep your momentum so that you can, like we said, step into your infinite potential. 
brilliant. I'm personally really excited for it. I hope all of you listening join me. Tell people where to go to either register or learn more about you and your incredible work. Absolutely. So if you go over to self love for superheroes.com self love for superheroes.com you can go ahead and sign up and we're going to have one release but when you add yourself you'll be able to not only get that but you'll be able to get health tips from us we'll send you out a free ebook to support an investment in your future self so you'll be able to get that and as well access to our podcast as well through the self love for superheroes site and if you message me on Instagram at Ask Sacred and say that you tuned into the show, um, we will give you a very special treat in honor of being a part of this amazing woman's network, which I'm sure if you're tuning into all the other shows, you know how fabulous she is. So anyone who reaches out and you say, OK, you reaching out through the Lean Out Method, we will give you a very special gift on Instagram at Ask Sacred. Fantastic. All right. We are going to round things out with my one question. I ask everyone and I cannot wait to hear what you have to say, which is how do you work smarter, not harder and keep things lean in your business? Absolutely. So how I work smarter, not harder to keep things lean in my business are some of the ways we talked about earlier. So just to recap, take some time to write that question down and look at what is it that I'm defining as success for me today? What is the question that I'm burning in my spirit that's going to help me get there because I don't really know that uh, connection point? And who are the three people that are going to connect me with, right? So if I have something that I'm wondering about, I really want to do PR opportunities. I'm like, I'm going to get into O Magazine. Question, who do I know that is connected to O Magazine? Answer number one, two, three. And you'd be surprised by just reaching out to your network how you can really help to kind of create more lean opportunities versus you spending hours on searching, searching, searching. You can focus in on your inner circle of trust. Number two, something we talked about earlier, which was belonging. And I want to circle back to that. Something that I feel is super key is if you are the biggest dreamer in your circle, we have to really assess your circle, which is why we create circles of belonging. Really look at If I'm the biggest dreamer in my circle, is this the ultimate circle? We've sometimes collect circles over the years, right? People from college, master's programs, different business circles, friendships, childhoods. And it doesn't mean that they aren't amazing for us. But in support of our mental health and well-being, it's really important that when you're dreaming big, you're surrounded by others who are big dreamers too. But they're not just big dreamers and then they fall off. They're big dreamers because they're dreaming and they're implementers, right? They're activators. And so I want to make sure that when you reach out to those three people, those are three people that when you ask the question like, oh my goodness, who do you know that might be an O or know someone else? They're responding in a way that's encouraging versus someone who's going to be a part of the sabotage of that voice in the back of your head that says you can't, you won't, not enough. Right. And so I would say those two things are ways to really look at how you can enhance, focus in and stay lean, because we don't want to get caught up in the inner critic. We want to get caught up in our infinite potential. Ah, I love that infinite potential. (laughs) Brilliant. Sacred, thank you so much. So much value in this episode. I hope all of you listening really, really enjoyed this interview as much as I did. Uh, Sacred, we'll have you back on again so we can take this conversation even further. Thanks for being here, everyone. I will see you again next week. Thank you. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Lean Out Your Business podcast. I hope you got a lot of value and actionable insights from today's show and would love if you take a moment to leave us a review. If you have any questions on today's episode or on how to lean out your business, join us over in our private Facebook community where every week we do live training and Q&A and I'd love to have you be part of the conversation. Head to leanoutmethod.com slash group to join us. And before you go, be sure to subscribe to the show so you're the first to know when we release a new episode. We'll see you next week.